Hey guys, I'm John. And I'm David. And today we bring you Master Grade Master Gundam, which was the first Master Grade I built, and good god is it sexy. Even the colors came out really nice. Yep, so this is Master Asia's second suit from G Gundam, or Mobile Fighter G Gundam. What was his first one? It was just some Hong Kong suit he used uh, for a little bit. Of course. But yeah, and it is it is so wonderful. It was a really fun build, and it looks really, really, really awesome. It's also very balanced. So let's get into the kit itself. <clears throat> I'm going to take off his pack here, just for all, all intensive purposes. purposes. God. Look, look at this. <laughs> He's handless for the moment. We'll keep that off. I have to be very careful with him because he's very camera shy and he does like to fall to pieces for no good reason. So I'm going to start with the head. It he's does... made with pieces of a Leo. Oh god. Oh, those would just blow up. <laughs> so head turns 360 degrees, goes forward and back, can look in any given direction pretty much. It's on an interesting set of uh, joints because the neck is on its own joint and then the head spins on top of that so you get a lot of good motion out of it the arms move forwards from the uh the shoulders which help for uh good dynamic posing and for him to cross his arms which comes in with this chest piece that is collapsible to cross the arms you just lift the collar up and you push that back and, and that's actually on all g gun and master grades yep so they can cross their arms like the badasses they are so, arm moves 360 degrees, bicep moves 360 degrees, the elbow is double jointed, but I am terrified of doing this. You can actually see the double joints. Well, actually, if you take the back off, oh, there we go, double joint. If we take the backing off of his elbow, you can see the screw that holds that together. Because on the master grades for G Gundam, they end up using screws to hold together their arms and legs. Which is pretty good. It's very solid. The arms themselves actually move out. Kind of like the Zuda. Kind of like the Zuda. Well, Zuda's up top. Mm -hmm. But the forearms extend out. Those are also you help uh, for crossing the arms. You, ha you can see all the ridges. You can put them at different lengths. The hands, any one of the given hands. I grabbed a wrong hand, but it's fine. On a ball joint. They don't have as much uh, articulation, actually, because they bump around. You can't really make their hands move anywhere farther than about here. So, and that's with practically all of the hands. Some of the hands actually don't even have a ball joint. They just kind of plug in. For the body itself, the body wobbles back and forth side to side, well, back and forth side to side. Do the zombie wobble. Zombie wobble. And the entire body moves 360 degrees. So you have a lot of body play. And then the skirt, the tassets, have the most extreme amount of little bits and pieces everywhere. Kind of move his arms back. These tassets move on their own. They move way a little bit. On the side skirts, these little castle-like pieces move independently from the main side skirt. And that's on both sides. And then on the back, it's one solid piece that kind of moves back and forth. The legs, yeah. <laughs> the leg does a good Spartan kick. Actually, I think it does go a little bit higher than that. Yeah. Legs kick pretty high. You have double jointed knees. Those come all the way back. The only thing I'm kind of upset about is that knee piece doesn't stay up. It kind of exposes all of the inner pieces I would like to have seen. They've been covered up by that knee. And then the feet have good side to side articulation. And they can move front and back pretty well. This is kind of like a little free floating piece. This cowl over his foot uh, just kind of wiggles around and stays. And then the front spike does about the same thing. It moves front and back. The bottoms are actually rubber. That helps them stand up. And the heels move from the toe. 
am about that far each. So that is articulation for the kit itself. And then on our articulation for his wings, they go about this far up on one side. This piece moves independently, but only moves about this far. And then it comes all the way down to about here, moving on that joint. I did not pay attention to any of the decal whatness. I kind of threw mine all over the place, however I wished. And he balances pretty well. He has, sometimes you have to kind of counterbalance him with his wings and everything, but he ends up standing up fairly well. With all of his accessories... <laughs> you can tell we're very organized. Clearly. Tons and tons and tons and tons of manipulators, or just hands, they're everywhere. This is the, these are the kind that I was talking about, how they just kind of plug in, no ball joint. This is used for one side to do uh, his crossing of his arms. He's got one to hold his sash, beam sash. He has a whole bunch of somewhat dramatic hands. All of the, the manipulators are kind of rubbery too. They just kind of bend at their own will. He has a couple of the straight jagged hands, which he uses for uh, the extended hands, which I'll get to. He has two burning hands, and then it came with plug-ins for Master Gundam and uh, Burning Gundam's hands. So, Dang those can both plug in. For the arms with these, you have to be here. I'm just going to take the whole arm off very delicately, <clears throat> or maybe I'll take this one off. This arm you just kind of unplug the center uh, piece, the double jointed elbow piece. You take that part up and then you plug these wired pieces in to the pegs. And then you can attach the little jagged hands. Of course, that's the wrong one. Very anal about this. Plug that in. And he can get you from quite a ways. Also, he wants hugs. Does want hugs. Who doesn't want hugs? Jip. Those are practically all of the little accessories you get with him. And it really takes a while to build the entire thing. As well as put everything together. Like, if you wanted to go ahead and switch from using these cords to going and doing crossed arms or just doing any other posing, it'll take you a while and you'll have to be... Uh, fairly delicate with it because even though it ends up being very solid some of the pieces like to fall off uh, my one arm joint this arm comes off fairly easy these little tacit pieces come off fairly easy uh, the floating cowls kind of come out of alignment sometimes uh, the back piece for me his backpack doesn't stay in as solid as I would like for it to it comes off every now and again but um, that's practically it for all of those little accessories and his articulation. I would give the kit uh, probably an 8 out of 10. It was my first Master Grade, uh, which is a good build. But was it your first? I thought... Um, it was my first. Well, that's right. Yeah, it was. Never mind. So, but it has a bunch of problems. The legs are very solid, but there's a lot of pieces that fall off. And just a lot of it seems a little loose to me. Decals are wonderful, though, so I'm going to go ahead and give it But attack. if you're a fan of G Gundam, I mean, you can overlook those. It's still easily. it's still a wonderful kit. I mean, if you compare it to... And it, it was ahead of its time, too. I compared mean, within, to wing kits. Yeah, I know. With an entire inner frame system, um, you know, that didn't even come around until a couple years later. I'm not sure the exact date, so don't quote me on that. But, you know, it, you know all the G Gundam Master Grades are like that, so... I, I know I want to get a uh, Shadow slash Eagle Gundam. Spiegel's pretty cool. Yeah. So anyways, uh, that's it. Until next time. Enjoy your build.